Everybody, praise the Lord. If you are still as strong as I am, everybody, praise the Lord. If you are strong, can you stand up? If you are weak, I permit you to sit down. If you are strong, can you stand up on your feet? Can you sit down? Now you are going to try it again and you are going to do it like an army of the Lord. If you are still awake, you are still at the last, and you are very strong, everybody, one, two, three, go, stand up. Praise the Lord. I said everybody, praise the Lord. We are going to talk about something very, very important. If there is anybody sleeping around you, you need to help me here and tap him gently and wake him up and say, wake up. Wake up. The pastor is talking to you about something very, very important. Will you do that? I said, will you do that? Thank you very much now. We're going to pray. Close your eyes. Close your mouth as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you brought us together. Thank you for this wonderful congregation of young people, victorious youth of this generation. Lord, I pray, before they go, you'll put a victory in everybody's life, in Jesus' name. I pray there'll be no mediocre in this place. There'll be no victim in this place. There'll be no failure in this place. I want you, Lord, to befriend them, to love them, and to pass all your grace, all your power, everything coming from heaven into their lives, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. If you want to clap, clap. If there's no leprosy in your hand, come on now. Put your hands together and clap for Jesus. Amen. I'm talking to you on this important subject. True friends for great achievers. True friends for great achievers. I've been reading about achievers a lot. If you're going to be a success, if you're going to be an achiever, you must read about achievers. And I read about one achiever. And then they said, they asked him a question. What is the secret of your achievement, of your accomplishment, of your success? What's the secret? We knew you some few years ago. You were down there. You were at the tail end of the queue, of the line. Now we'll see you up here. Can you tell us the secret of your achievement, of your success, of your promotion, of your progress, of coming to the height where you are now? And he answered very, very simply. He said, I had a good friend. I had a good friend. A good friend can do a lot in your life. That's the reason why tonight we're talking about the true friends of great achievers in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. And I'm reading to you in verse 3. Acts 27, verse 3. And the next day, we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. To go unto his friends to refresh himself. Paul, an apostle, he had, a, he had friends. He needed friends. He was an achiever. He was a success in the field he chose. But he was not a lone ranger. He was not alone. He had friends. And in that verse it says, he was permitted and allowed that his friends will see him. And those friends, here is what they did. They refreshed him. You need to understand that in life, as you go through life, there is this cheer and wear. Sometimes discouragement. Sometimes problem. Sometimes distress. Sometimes strain. Sometimes tiredness. Sometimes stress. Sometimes depression. And you need restoration, refreshing, renewal, revival, if you please. And you need companions, friends, that will cheer you up, encourage you, lift you up. 
and be partners with you so that you can work together in the pathway of progress and success. Everyone needs friends to help him, to assist, to encourage, to fellowship with. But uh, there are people that do not know who true friends are, and they are false friends. They are unfaithful friends, and they are not trustworthy at a time of need. Only true friends can help you when you actually need them. There's no time I would have taught you a chorus, and I would have sung it with you. But you can write it, and maybe next time we'll sing it. The best friend to have is Jesus. The best friend to have is Jesus. He will hear me when I call. He will keep me lest I fall. Oh, the best friend to have is Jesus. And then it says, the best thing to do is to trust Him. The best thing to do is to trust Him. And if you, if you on Him depend, He will keep you to the end. Oh, the best thing to do is to trust Him. And the best book to read is the Bible. The best book to read is the Bible. If you read it every day, it will keep you on your way. Oh, the best book to read is the Bible. I'm talking tonight on friendship. And the three points are divided the message. Number one, the danger of having bad and tempting friends. The danger of having bad and tempting friends. Number two, the description of good and true friends. The description of true and of good and true friends. And now number three, the decision to have the greatest true friends. The decision to have the greatest true friends. Come back to number one. The danger of having bad and tempting friends. The very fact that they tempt, the very fact that they want and they wish evil for you, the very fact that they want you down in the pit and not at the top or the mountain top, the very fact that they are watching for your fall, the very fact that they don't even hide their hatred and they tempt you, and they want you to fall, and they want you to lose the good thing of your life, qualifies them for being bad friends. The danger of having bad and tempting friends in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm reading there in verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. That's what those bad friends, companions will do. A rotten egg. If there is a good egg nearby, the good egg will not make the rotten egg to become wholesome and good. But the rotten egg will make the good egg to the bad. A minus with the plus. The plus does not change the minus to plus. But the minus will affect the plus. Make it minus negative. That's why minus three multiplied by plus four is what? minus 12. The negative and the bad friend, the bad companion, will turn your life into reverse, make it bad. In Genesis chapter 34, Genesis chapter 34, here is one of the effects of a bad, tempting friend. Genesis 34 verses 1 and 2. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, 
went out to see the daughters of the land. And when she came, the son of Amor, the Hivite, the prince of the country, saw her. He took her and lay with her and defiled her. Defiled her. Notice that. I'm coming back to that. When you are just walking about, just roaming about, and you go here and here and here, walking about aimlessly, what happens is you meet bad people, and you meet wrong people, and you meet the people that put a minus into your life. And they reverse your life from success unto failure, from being clean unto being unclean and defiled. And they take away from you that something that you lose. Once you lose it, you can never get it again. Diana lost virginity. And there was no way. Once you've lost it, 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 you've lost it forever. Until you die, you cannot regain it again. And so Diana here, because of association, association with bad people, she lost what she couldn't ever regain again. In Job chapter 19, I'm talking about the danger of having bad and tempting friends. In Job chapter 19, here in verse 14, Job 19, verse 14, my kinsfolk have failed. My familiar friends have forgotten me. Nobody is such a terrible problem. Uh, you know the sickness he had, he needed counselor, comforter, uh, somebody to care, somebody to help, somebody to cheer him up. But the so-called friends had forgotten him in the time of need. That's what bad friends do. Because actually, uh, they're not really your friends. They are just there when they have something they can get from you. When there's something they can suck out of you, take out of you, that's when they seem to be near and to be very friendly. But if they know that the man is sick, all his cattle gone, even his children, they are dead, even his body is not wholesome and healthy, and there is nothing we can get from the man. Once we cannot get anything from the man, why are we looking for him again? When you are rich, when you have this, when you have that, it appears people are running around you, and you think they are friends, but they are not friends. When you get into trouble, they are not trustworthy. It says, my familiar friends, the people I thought, oh yes, they'll be there when I need them. They have forgotten me. That's what you don't want. You don't want what you really have in need. The people that you feel will be able to help you, you don't want them to turn against you. Those are not good friends, bad friends. Verse 19. All my inward friends abort me. My inner circle friend. Those people, I never took a decision. I will get to them. I will talk together. I will say, how about this? How about this? I'm thinking about this. What do you think? And a day will not pass. I will be see them. I will see them. I ball to I ball. will discuss together because I thought they were my friends. Now I'm in trouble and they are poor me. It's like I am something you should put in the toilet. That's the reason why you need to be able to understand who is a good friend. And who are the people you can trust. Who are the people that they are trustworthy when you need them? In Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. And in verse 24. Make no friends with an angry man. And with a furious man that shall not go. Let thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Anyone that is always angry. Always accusing you of something you have not done. Always finding fault. Always pointing to something wrong. And maybe about this, about that. And every comment he is passing is always discouraging. It's always discouraging. That's not a friend. 
make friends with, make no friends with those who are, who are always angry, always angry, always angry. And then in Lamentation, Lamentation chapter 1 verse 2, Lamentation chapter 1 verse 2, here it is a wonderful verse. I must wait for you to open it before I read it to you because you must know this verse. If you have never read this, you must read this one today. Look at it. Lamentation, that's after Jeremiah. Lamentation chapter 1 verse 2. She weepeth so in the night. Her tears on her, her, her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. I'm telling you, children, I know you don't like us calling you children, but if you get near me here, you understand why I call you children? When you look at me, you know that um, you know, I have right to call you children. Children, are you there? God bless you. Let me hear a good amen now. Now, you see children, here is something very important. You are going to school, you are a girl. And instead of doing your maths lessons and doing your chemistry and the English and all these courses that, you know, they've been talking to us about, there, there's a boy that comes along and he says, can I have your hand? We're going to a nightclub tonight and it's going to be a wonderful scene. We're going to jump and we're going to dance and we're going to kneel, we're going to crawl, we're going to eat, we're going to drink, we're going to do everything. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful thing. When you see people talking like that, they are empty-headed people. They can talk about dancing, they can talk about drinking, they can talk about a lot of things, but if you stop them and you say, eh, oh, well, by the way, before we talk about the dancing, can we talk about that quadratic equation? And that, um, you know, it was the formula for this uh, differential equation. And what is this? How do you balance this equation in chemistry? And this thing they taught us about light and the prism in physics, can you talk about this? Then they are blank. Because they don't know anything in that area. All they know is this other area. But the point is, if you agree with them, and then you go with them to do the drinking and the dancing, and then they turn your mind and your brain away from your studies, eventually when you fail, and you are weeping and crying, and you become a drop out, they will not want to see you again. It's like you'll become an enemy. You'll cry and cry, and there'll be nobody to try dry the tears for you. That's the reason why you need to be very careful of these bad, tempting friends. Let me summarize this point one. Bad, tempting friends, what do they do? Number one, number one, they deceive. They don't tell you their minds. They don't tell you their minds. Are you girls there? Don't, don't, don't listen to them. You are the only one I love. I will die if uh, you, know, uh, you are not my friend. It's all a lie. They are saying the same thing to another girl in another place. They are deceiving you. But, tempting friends, number one, they do what? They deceive. Number two, they defraud. They want to trick you out of what is rightfully yours and take what belongs to you, take it away from you and get it to them. Number three, the disguise, the disguise. If I have time, I will read to you about Amnon. In 2 Samuel chapter 13, he looked inside his heart, he had sinful desire towards Taman. And then his friend asked him, he said, ah, this is Jonathan, his friend. He said, I see you are getting lean every day. And you are king's son. Oh, he said, because I'm having this desire towards uh, Tamar, my sister, because they have the same father, but not for the same mother. And I cannot seem to, you know, get through. Oh, the other fellow said, very, very simple, just pretend that you are sick. And as you pretend that you are sick, you tell David, your father, that you are sick and that you need to eat and you don't have appetite. And the only way you can have appetite is if your sister Tamar will come to you and cook before you and then present the food to you. And then he disguised 
as if he was really sick. And then he told David the father and said, My father, you know I'm so sick, I'm dying. I don't have appetite. I did eat it yesterday, I did eat it the other day, I did eat it, but I'm losing my voice, I cannot talk again. And so that trick got David. I pray that their trick will not get you. I said, I pray that their trick will not get you in Jesus' name. And then Tamar came, innocent girl, innocent girl, a foolish girl. And then Kush, and I'm not said, bring the food here. I cannot even get up and go to the table and go and eat the food. Everybody go out so that I can have appetite. Did you ever hear that? Everybody must go out before you can have appetite to eat. And everybody went out as uh, Tamar brought the food. He wasn't looking for food. He grabbed Tamar. He said, we must commit sin. Ah, the guy said, but we are sick. Don't do this. Don't do this. Eventually, they filed her. I'm telling you that those bad friends, they disguise. They'll tell you they are sick when they are not sick. That's why be very careful. Number one, they deceive. Number two, they default. Number three, they disguise. Number four, bad friends, they discourage. They discourage. You want to climb up. And you want to do the right thing. And you want to make it in life. They say, no, you cannot do it. No, you cannot do it. Bad friends will discourage you. Number five, they dispute. They are quarrelsome. A little thing, they turn it into a fight. A little thing, they begin to dispute with you. They begin to argue with you. They never see eye to eye with you. They are always looking for something to disagree with. Always disagreeable. If you know people like that, they are watching for mistake. They are not watching for you to do right. They are not watching. Anytime you have done right and you are happy, they say, what's making him happy? How can he be happy when I'm not happy? What makes him so joyful? And they, and, and, and they say that they are your friends. And here, they want to dispute. They want to debate. And they want to pull you into quarrel. Number six, those bad friends, they disgrace you. Their behavior will disgrace you. Because when people know that you are moving together, and then they do something bad, that bad thing they do will rub on you. They will say, oh, but you are strange. And he's stealing, so you must be stealing too. But you are his friend, and he's HIV positive, so you must be HIV positive too. You are his friend, he is a failure, you must be a failure. All the bad things they do will rub on you. Because they will disgrace you. Number seven, they demoralize. Demoralize. That means they weaken your morals. They weaken your morals. The stories they tell. The jokes they crack. The books they read. And the books they want to lend you. And the things they want to give you is to demoralize you. That's the reason why you will recognize the qualities of a badge Tempting friend, and you cancel them, you say, no, 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 no. That's heavy weight. That's going to be something I can't pack in my load. I can't include that in my life because it's going to demoralize me. Number eight, bad friends defile. You saw that in the life of, uh, of Dinah and in the life of Tamar. And the advice that Jonathan gave unto Amnon, bad friends Defile, number nine. You know, these bad friends have been watching them. And you find a gentle boy, a nice boy, a truthful boy, an honest boy. But the only mistake he makes in his life is that he chooses a friend. And this friend is not a nice fellow. And as I watch both of them, I see that this bad boy wants to do something. He wants to be in control every time. If this nice boy, honest boy, truthful boy, Christian boy, wants to do right, he, wants, he says, no, you can't do that. I'll be bullying on this fellow. And he'll say that, you know, they are friends together. I will be bullying on him. I see their number nine bad friends dominate. They want to dominate. If it's a conversation, they must dominate. If it's any decision you are taking, they must dominate. 
If there is anything you want to do, anywhere you want to go, they must dominate. Bad friends dominate. Number 10, bad friends destroy. They will destroy your life. They will destroy your career. They will destroy the goals you have, the vision you have, every good thing you have, they will destroy. Revise with me. Number one, bad friends deceive. Number two, they defraud. Number three, they disguise. Number four, they discourage. Number six, they dispute. Number, number, number five, number six, they disgrace. Number seven, they demoralize. Number eight, they defile. Number nine, they dominate. Number ten, they destroy. Beware of them. Run away from them. I go to point number two. In point number two, the description of good and true friends. You cannot do without having friends. You need friends. You need friends. Even Paul the apostle, he had friends. Even Jesus Christ, he told his own disciples, ye are my friends. He needed friends. And then when Jesus Christ first gets Simony, he chose three of his inner circle friends and they went with him. He said, pray with me. Jesus needed those friends. Paul needed those friends. You need friends. Therefore, they must be good friends and true friends. In Proverbs chapter 27. Proverbs chapter 27. And I'm reading there in verse 17. Proverbs 27, verse 17. Here it says, iron sharpness iron. Iron sharpness iron. That means when your, when your cutlass is blunt, then you file it and you sharpen it. The file is iron, the cutlass is iron. Iron sharpness iron. So, a man sharpness the countenance of his friend. That's a good friend. That's a true friend. He sees that you are down. He sees that you are discouraged. He says, my friend, what's the problem? Oh, you say, this is my problem. Oh, he says, there is nothing to that. I went through that before. He encourages you. He stirs you up. He, he builds you up. Iron sharpness. Iron so A man sharpness. The countenance of his friend. 17, 17. That's Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. A friend loveth at all times. A friend loveth at all times. How important that is, you know. Am I? Children, you'll be, there are times will be discouraged in life. There are times will be discouraged in life. Elijah was sometimes discouraged. And even Jesus Christ, he said, even a soul was in anguish, even unto death. And Paul the apostle, troubles within, troubles without. And he said, we were pressed, even unto death. Times will come in your life when you might be discouraged. But then, a friend, a true friend, what does he do? That true friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. And those are the times when you need those people and they just come near and they encourage you and they cheer you up. In Job chapter 6, Job chapter 6, verse 14. Job 6, verse 14. To him that is afflicted, pity should be showed from his friend. That is when you are afflicted, when you are sick, when you are discouraged, when there is any problem, then your friends, a true friend, will show pity for you. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 63, I am a companion of all them that fear thee, of all them that keep thy precepts. And I'm talking to you now on this point. Number two, the description of good and true friends. What's, uh, how do I describe, if somebody tells me, and he says, describe a true friend for me. And then I begin to think, I say, okay, a good friend, a good friend, a good friend, a good friend must help me in my life 
to write a good story about myself. It's more, it must turn the story of my life and turn it around. And if I was going the wrong way, a real friend will help me put something in my life and write a better story. Turn me around. Make me different. Write a good story. Then I say, okay, if, I'm, if somebody is going to help me to write a good story about me, what's he going to use? He's going to use A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, W, V, X, Y, Z. Am I right? That's how we're right. You cannot write any good story without having the alphabet. What's a good friend? A, a good friend appreciates Christ and your Christian life. A good friend, a good friend. You are born again. You are a Christian. You are a child of God. A good friend, A, appreciates Christ and your Christian life. If somebody comes your way and he says, I like everything about you. The only thing I don't like is that you receive Christ and I don't like your Christian life. That's not a good friend. Cut him off. B. A good friend believes and bears with you. A good friend. He doesn't make you argue every time. He believes you and he bears with you. If you say, uh, you know, my friend, this is this, you will not argue for one hour. Before he takes your word, a good friend believes and then he bears with you. You are not an angel. You are not perfect. And if you, if you have a friend, if he's a good friend, he'll bear with you. He'll say, well, I even thank God for my friend. He is not like he was five years ago. He is improving and he is growing and he is climbing up. And I'm bearing with him until he becomes what he ought to be. Number uh, C now, a good friend comforts and cares and counsels scripturally. And that's what friends are for. Whenever you are down, whenever there is something that is wrong, a good friend will come along. And then with care, with counsel, with comfort, they will help you. A good friend, D now, desires the best for you, spiritually, academically, physically. A good friend, a good friend, desires the best for you, spiritually. Of course, a good friend will be encouraged, you ought to be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. And if you are born again, why are you not serving the Lord, living the Christian life? He's designing the best for you, spiritually and academically. If somebody comes and he says, uh, can we go out together to go and visit so and so? I'm sorry, I have an assignment. And we must submit this assignment tomorrow. Forget about it. What assignment are you, are you submitting? I said, let's go out and go and go and have a good time. He doesn't desire the best for you academically. Is that a good friend? No. Therefore, a good friend desires the best for you, spiritually, academically, and physically. He, a good friend, encourages you to serve the Lord faithfully. Will not come and show you tricks how you can serve the Lord with a half hearted zeal. How you will serve the Lord with deception. How you will serve the Lord with some tricks. How you will serve the Lord with secret hidden sin. A good friend encourages you to serve the Lord faithfully. If a good friend forgives and forgets when offended, you'll step on his toe accidentally, unintentionally. Because, you know, you were not thinking that he put his foot there and you were just walking and just having a nice time and you stepped on his feet. And a good friend will forgive and forget. But you know, if, if somebody that you offended one year ago, two years ago, and he's still not seen that offense after one year, after two years, and he's still trying to see how to revenge and fight back. That's not a friend. He might smile. He might try and shake your hand. He might say, oh, my friend, that's just language. Empty language has no meaning. A friend forgives and forgets when offended. And then, gee, a friend gives cheerfully. Ah, but I gave you yesterday. I gave you the other time. Am I the only one you depend upon? No, that's not a friend. A good friend gives cheerfully. And a good friend, H, honors your Lord. And honors every important person in your life. 
Your dad is an important person in your life. Your mom is an important person in your life. And if there is somebody that doesn't honor the Lord in your life and doesn't honor every important person in your life, that's not a good friend. That's not a good friend. That's not a good friend. Your teacher is an important person in your life. And if there is somebody that will be telling you how to, you know, show, how to be disrespectful to your teacher, that's not a friend. And of course, you know, your pastor is an important person in your life. Because the Lord has given you the pastor as a gift. He gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come in the unity of the faith unto a perfect man. You need that teacher, you need that pastor, you need that evangelist, and a person that does not honor that important person in your life. That's not a friend. A friend honors the Lord and honors the important people in your life. Then I, a friend, identifies with you and with your good goals. He identifies with you. You, you have a dream. You have a goal. You have an ambition. You have a desire. And it's a good desire. It's a good ambition. A good friend will come by your side and identify with that good goal, aim, in your life, he identifies with you and with your good goals. J, a good friend, joins you in worship, in the worship of God. Oh, if a person says, well, I love you, I like you, I appreciate you, I'm with you, I am for you. But the only thing is that I have another religion. And it don't, it, it, they will say, don't let that hinder our friendship. We're still friends together. The only thing is, you are in. Christianity, I am in the other religion. The only thing is that we cannot worship together. That's not a friend. That's not a friend. A friend will join you in the worship of God together. Okay. A good friend keeps you from evil and from evil association. A good friend, a good friend will help you to keep you from evil and from evil association. L, a good friend loves the Lord and loves you in all purity. It's not everybody that says, I love you, I love you, I love you, that loves you. Sometimes it's lost. Sometimes it's a flesh. Sometimes there's something else driving them. Sometimes they want to take your purity away. Sometimes they want to take your honesty away. Sometimes they just want to be with you and defile your life. That's not friendship. A good friend will love the Lord and love you in all purity. M. A good friend motivates you to focus on essential things in life. A good friend will motivate you. Every time you meet together, you always have something to say to motivate you and move you to focus on the essential things of life. And a good friend, really good friend, notices areas that need correction in your life and notifies you gently. Oh, somebody that will see something you are doing and that thing will destroy you. You see something you are doing and that thing is going to give you setbacks. You see something you are doing and that thing is just going to devastate your life. And he never talks about it. He says, I want to keep our friendship. I want to keep our friendship. I don't want to talk about anything that needs correction in his life. That's no, that's no friend. A friend notices Areas that need correction in your life. And a friend notifies you about those areas gently. Now, a good friend oh, opens doors of opportunity for you. A good friend. Have you heard the forms are out from universities? Have you heard there is this new course in that polytechnic? Have you heard there is this opportunity here? Since we came out of school and we're still going to our institution and we need some money, have you heard there is a way we can make legitimate money and then go into that thing there? And I, I, I discovered it the other day and I felt you are my friend. I must tell you, a good friend opens doors of opportunities for you. B, a good friend 
prays with you and prays for you. Not only when you are together, when you are together, he prays with you. When you are not together, he will pray for you. Now, a good friend Q quits whatever you correct in his life, in her life, to keep your friendship. A good friend will quit something that you have corrected. You might correct it with just a look. And the way you look, your friend says, looks like my friend has caught me doing something, saying something wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Or he might just say, my friend, he, he, might, he might correct it with a question. Do you think that's the best thing to do? Do you think that's the right thing to do? Do you think that's the right place to go? Do you think that's the right book to read? Just with a question. Or he might come direct and just say, my friend, I, I didn't know you were still reading this kind of book. I didn't know that you are still having this kind of dressing. I really will appreciate if you can become more biblical and you can cut off this from your life. A good friend will quit will quit whatever you correct in his life, in our life, so that he can keep your friendship. Our a good friend repulse you without compromise when you are wrong. Oh, he doesn't say because we are friends. I won't talk about it. I won't reprove him. He'll correct you. He will reprove you without compromise when you are wrong. As a good friend seeks your best interests in life. You might be miles and kilometers apart. He's thinking about you. And a really good friend, he is seeking your best interest in life. T, a good friend takes time to visit you when you are sick. A good friend, he will take time. Um, I, I learned that you were sick, but you know, I was so busy that I couldn't take time to visit you. Is that a friend? So what, what if I died? Then you'll just forget me and go and pick another person. That's not a good friend. A good friend will take time to visit and to care for you. When you are sick, you, a good friend, upholds the truth with you. The truth of Scripture, the truth of Christ, the truth that has set you free is so important for you in your life. This truth of the word of God you are hearing is so important for you. And a good friend upholds that truth with you. B. A good friend values Christ and values heaven just like you. You value heaven. And you will not do anything that will hinder you from getting to heaven. If that's a good friend, he's going to value Christ and he's going to value heaven just like you. A good friend worships the only true God. A good friend, a good friend, doesn't go into occultism. Oh, my friend will not like that. I can't do that. A good friend, he doesn't go to worship Satan. No, I cannot do that because I'm praying to brother so-and-so. I'm praying to sister so-and-so. There's no way I can do that. A good friend will not backslide and go to Habalist. No, I cannot do that. Number one, I'm a Christian. Number two, what if my friend, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, yes, it will break his heart. I cannot do that. A good friend worships the only true God. X. A true friend expects the best from you. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to be a mediocre. Every time he's talking to you, you will see that he's having a great, a high expectation of you. That's a good friend. He's always moving you up. He's always, he's always move on and press on. A good friend expects the best from you. Uh, you know, uh, when somebody is not a good friend and maybe he is making 10th position and you are making the 7th or the 6th position, if he's not a good friend, he'll be eyeing and watching your position. He'll be saying, he's even better than I am. Therefore, uh, I'm going to do something uh, until he becomes lower. And then, when I, if I still maintain 10th position, when he gets to 17th and 20th position, then I am happy because I want to have an edge over him. Over That's not a friend. That's not a friend. A friend expects the very best from you. And then why? A good friend yields to God and gives up wrong opinions. A good friend yields to God and gives up wrong opinions. 
And did you know some of these people that say they are your friends? And if they hold the wrong opinion, and you point it out, you might even quote the chapter and the verse of the Bible. They are so proud, they won't even accept before you, and they call themselves your friends, they won't even accept before you that they are wrong. They will hold on to their wrong opinions. But a good friend, when you discuss together, and you fellowship together, they will yield to God, and they will give up wrong opinions. Said a good friend, zealously supports you in doing good. A good friend, a really good friend, a really good friend, supports, zealously supports you in doing good. You need all this so that you know how to choose friends, because whether we like it or not, boys, you have boys like yourself who will be your friends. And girls, you have girls like yourself who will be your friend. And later in life, some of you already now you are in your early 20s, in a few years' time, you'll be thinking about marriage. And a young man wanting to marry a young woman, a young woman wanting to marry a young man, the person you are marrying has to have the qualities of a friend. And you need all these qualities before you can take that final decision. I've described for you, from A to Z, the description of a good and true friend, so that it is this kind of friend that will use these alphabets and write a better history, a better story of your life, and turn your life around and write a new chapter, a new paragraph that you'll say, I am happy. This new chapter of my life was able to, was written because, because, because I had a friend. I was making a B. Even B plus before I had the friend. This friend came into my life with all these alphabets and now I am an A student because I had a good friend. I pray you will have a good friend. Now I come to point number three. The decision to have the greatest true friend. The decision to have the greatest true friend. Now, as we talk about the greatest true friend, I told you already the best friend to have is Jesus. The best friend to have is Jesus. He will hear me when I call. He will keep me lest I fall. Oh, the best friend to have is Jesus. The best thing to do is to trust Him. The best thing to do is to trust Him. And if you on Him depend, He will keep you to the end. Oh, the best thing to do is to trust Him. When you have Jesus Christ, as your friend. That's the very best friend and the greatest friend you can have. In John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Reading from verse 13. John 15, 13. It says here, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That is, he laid down his life for you. And there's no greater law than he, that he could show. Except that he laid down his very life for you because he counted you as his friend and he said, Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servants knoweth not what his Lord doeth. For all things that but I've called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. He died for us. So, by the way, why did he die for us? Romans gives us the answer. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Reading from verse 6. He gave his life for us. So that we can be his friends. In Romans chapter 5, verse 6. For when we are yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely, for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure, for a good man, some will even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, 
by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life when we become born again we turn away from our sin actually if we want to be friends with jesus we must turn away from what he hates we cannot hold on to what he hates and claim to be a friend of jesus we turn away from what he hates then we embrace what he loves we turn away from sin and we believe him because he died for us on the cross of calvary then we're born again we're saved our sins are forgiven we're reconciled to god we become friends of jesus christ in proverbs chapter 22 proverbs chapter 22 verse 11 proverbs 22 verse 11 he that loveth pureness of heart for the grace of his leaves the king shall be his friend. Jesus is king. The king of kings. And if we want this king of kings to be our friend, here it says, he that loveth pureness of heart, purity of heart, for the grace of his lips, because of the change and transformation in his conversation and language, the king, the king of kings, shall be his friend. And as I invite you to become friends to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, you need to abandon anything that is impure. And then you need to have the purity of heart. You are saved, then you move on, you even become sanctified. Then because of the grace in your life, and the grace in your lips, and the grace in your language, even the king of kings, will be your friend. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24, Proverbs 18, verse 24, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Jesus Christ is that friend that will stick close to you, close to you, closer than even your relatives, so that whenever there is any problem, they will help you. When you have Jesus Christ as friend, what does he do? Number one, he forgives. And he is the one that forgives so easily. He forgives. Number two, he cleanses. If you walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Number three, he saves. He saves. He saves you. Now you are born again. Number four, he heals. That's a friend, a mighty, powerful friend, a great physician. And he heals, and he's your friend when you are born again. Five, he delivers. If there is any affliction, Jesus Christ, he delivers. And it doesn't matter how bad the case may be. Lazarus was sick. And he sent message to Jesus Christ, and he said, the man whom you love is sick. Your friend is sick. Your friend is sick. And he told the disciples, let's abandon every other thing. Let's leave every other thing. Let's go and wake up Lazarus, the man whom you love is sick. And when you make him your friend, anytime you are sick, anytime you are afflicted, anytime there is any oppression, he heals, he delivers. Number six, he protects. That, that's a good friend. That's a good friend. He was praying for his own friends, his own disciples. He said, Holy Father, keep them from the evil. He protects. Number seven, he intercedes. Sometimes you are not even able to pray for yourself. And Jesus, your friend, is praying for you. Number eight, he answers prayer. When you are even praying, and, and, and he answers so speedily because he's a friend. Number nine, he counsels. He counsels. Or well, the still small voice in your heart, in your spirit, he'll say, go this way and go this way so that you can avoid serious, terrible mistakes in life. Number ten, he loves. He loves. And anything you expect from someone that loves you so dearly, he will do. Number 11, he provides. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Number 12, he helps. That's why he's a friend. You need help in life. You'll get into some straight corners, into narrow places. You'll get into some crossroads. You'll not know what to do. And Christ, your friend, will come to help you. 
number 13 he gives wisdom we need wisdom in life wisdom to to walk around and wisdom to relate with people and wisdom to do whatever we need to do and jesus christ wiser than solomon he lends us of that wisdom and he gives wisdom Number 14, he defends when the enemy comes against you, like a mighty flood. Here is a friend that is so near, and he has never failed, and he has ever conquered. He has conquered the devil and the demons and disease and death, and he defends you. Number 15, he comforts. You know, sometimes you are weeping, you are crying, and the hurt is so deep inside your heart, and there's nobody to comfort you, or even to share with you, or even to sympathize with you. And this is your friend. He comes to comfort you. Number 16, he sanctifies. And he prayed for his own friends, for his own disciples. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And he gives power. He gives power. Here is our friend saying, Behold, I give unto you power. Do you know that most people are selfish? If they have power, they don't want to give us the same power. If they have any good thing, they don't want to give us. He's a true friend. He's a good friend. He's the greatest friend. He gives us power. Behold, I give unto you power. And to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And good enough, wonderful. Listen to this number 18. Our friend is coming back again. I said, our friend Jesus Christ is coming back again. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Behold, I go to prepare a place for you, my friends. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. I will come again. And then take you unto myself. And then forever, forever, forever. We'll be with our friend in heaven. And we'll never leave one another. We'll be reconciled and joined together in heaven. And we'll be together in heaven forever. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I said, isn't that a wonderful thing? Now I want to give you the chance. If you have not been a friend of Jesus, maybe you are an acquaintance of Jesus. You know the name. You know some verses of the Bible referring to him. But you have not really had a close relationship with him. And your sin has separated you between you and him. You are just an acquaintance. You know him afar off. Sometimes he heals you. Sometimes he does some things. For, because, you know, Jesus Christ did a lot of things for strangers. But now you want to come nearer. And you want to embrace him. And you want to say, Jesus, I take you as my savior. I take you as the lover of my soul. I take you as my friend. And he will take you today and say, I take you to. Once you say, Jesus, I take you as my friend, he too will take you as his friend. If you know the meaning of taking him as your friend. That are, the things I've done that made you unhappy, I'm now your friend, I'll not do them anymore. Forgive me the ones I've done. I now accept you. I accept your forgiveness. I accept your grace. You are now my friend. From now till the end of my life, I will never leave you. I want to give you a chance. Can you just bow your head and close your eyes? Close your eyes and please bow your heads. I'm giving you a chance tonight to think about your life. And to look over your life and to say, yes, Lord, as I look at my life, I've been an acquaintance, I know your name, I've heard about your name, I've read the Bible, I've done religious knowledge in school, and I've heard your name. I've been an acquaintance, but now I want to be a real friend, a friend of Jesus, a friend of Jesus, a friend of Jesus, a friend of Jesus. Of Jesus. I gave myself to you. You are now my friend, and I'm now your friend. And you'll be the greatest friend in my life. Whatever you tell me now, I will do. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. I hate to do from now on anything that makes you unhappy. If you are there, you want him to be your real, real, real friend. Just raise up your hand. I'm praying with you. If you are raising up your hand, I want you to stand up. Only those people, only those people. I want you to stand up. If you are taking this Jesus Christ as your friend, where are you? You are taking this Jesus as your friend. And I am saying, I'm sorry for the bad things I've done before. Forgive me. I know you died for me to take away my sin. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and stand up right there. Make it a meaningful relationship with the Lord I'm praying with you now. Just close your eyes as you stand up and raise up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these boys and girls 
who are coming to you today are saying they want you to be their friend, their greatest friend on earth, their Savior, their Lord. Lord, I am praying all the sins they have committed in the past to offend you to offend the Heavenly Father. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Cleanse all their sins away. We know you are a good friend. You are a true friend. Anytime we call upon you like this, you never say no. You never say no. Therefore, all those sins we believe you are forgiven and they are forgiven in Jesus' name. I pray that the peace of God will enter their hearts. That now, they will be your friends indeed. Friends indeed. Friends indeed. And all their needs, you'll provide for them. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said a big amen. And you know, before you, before we close, he is our friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has power. And that power he uses without any selfishness. So as to heal us and to take every sickness and every infirmity away. You know, open your eyes and look up at me here. If somebody had the power to take your sickness away, and yet he will not take it away, and he says, is your friend, is that a friend? If somebody, if you are rolling in pain, and somebody has the medicine in hand to stop that pain in a minute. And yet, he puts the pills in the pocket, and he see you rolling and pills there, and he says, my friend, my friend, my friend. Then you look up at him with tears in your eyes, with pain and agony in your heart and body. You say, help me, help me, help me. And he doesn't help you. Is that a friend? But Jesus is a friend. And he has power to heal. And he has power to deliver. And because he's a friend, he does it every time. And if you know that Jesus is a good friend, as I prayed, any sickness in your body, any infirmity there, any brain damage there, any epilepsy there, any deformity there, any blindness there, friend Jesus, mighty Jesus, he will take everything away. I said he will take everything away. I said it will take everything away. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, the, the lame should be ready to jump. And the blind should be ready to see. And those who have not been able to walk and they are weak, they should be, they should be ready to rise up and jump and walk and run because the time for your healing has come. If you believe the time has come, say Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. If you are lame, I'm, working, I'm waiting for you. If you are lame, I'm waiting for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, you are our Savior. You are our Lord. And now you are our friend. And we come to you asking that you will heal your friends. That you will deliver your friends. That you will set free all your friends who are in bondage. Therefore, right now, I pray, every sickness be healed in Jesus' name. That brain problem, I command you. That brain insanity, infirmity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That spirit of epilepsy, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I'm praying right now for all those people that have any deformity in the leg, one leg shorter than the other. I command that leg that is shorter than the other, be straightened, go out in Jesus' name. The lameness and the paralysis, I bring the power of the Almighty God. Upon that paralysis, upon that lameness, I pray right now, rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, I command you right now. Blind eyes, you hear the voice of authority. I command those blind eyes, be opened in Jesus' name. The deafness in your ear, whether in one ear or in both ears, I command that the deafness will vanish away in Jesus' name. And those who are dumb, I pray that the Lord will loosen the cords of your tongue. And you will speak out. I command therefore the dumbness to vanish away in Jesus' name. 
the swelling in your body. I command that swelling right now. In any part of your body, you have an extra tissue, extra uh, thing that is occupying unnecessary, unnecessary space there. That swelling be melted away, be dissolved, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, anywhere in their body, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, their skin and their blood and their kidney and any part of their body, touch them right now. Touch them right now. Take all the sicknesses away in Jesus' name. Anywhere the devil has been causing defeat and failure in your life, I silence that devil. Get out of their lives in Jesus' name. That fellow there that wanted to commit suicide and you are thinking of suicide, that spirit of suicide, I command you, come out of her life in Jesus' name. Pray, Lord, that you touch every boy, every girl, everyone here, and your healing virtue will pass through their bodies right now. And at the final, amen, every sickness, every infirmity, and every affliction of the devil will vanish away in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, it is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, it is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. I believe. Yes, it is well with me, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, it is well with me. I believe. I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Sing it now once more, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe it is well with me. Amen. Check up right now. The miracle is there. Your father, final amen. The miracle is there. The miracle is there. The miracle is there. If you could receive 